Hey, so this video will cover Div3, which is all MS Project. So I'll go over how to do uh, Div3 and MS Project. I'll go over this, all the requirements here. Um, first thing you can do is go ahead and start up MS Project, Microsoft Office Project. And you can close out of that, getting started, and tasks as well. Move that over. Um, you can right click any of these to insert a column. Let's go and insert. Uh, and insert percentage work complete. I say OK. You can um, then move this, I think, anywhere you want. If you don't want it right there, you can put it on the end or uh, wherever you would like it. And let's see. First thing he says is do not make a generic project plan for a generic IS project. Uh, plan to make it exactly resemble what you've been doing uh, and plan to do for project number one. Use the names for the deliverables involved. So deliverable number one, deliverable number two, um, and where you're projecting the effort for building the application. Uh, use the names of the object your objects you're building. Um, so you you would use like the form names and um, any object names I guess that you could use. You can go and use those such as F FRM, you know, main panel, um, all those kind of things. Don't just say the main panel. Actually, use the actual name for it. Um, before you do anything else, he says uh, set up your project to use a student calendar where where working times are flexible and are seldom in days. Um, you know, he wants you to basically use hours and things, so it shows you right here um, how to do all that. So it says, I use the options view to set the date format to use date dates and times, not the default date only. So you would uh, go into MS Project and go to Tools, Options, and go to View tab right here and you would choose the date format. I think by default it was at this and you want to change it to something like this or whatever else makes sense for you and say OK. Actually before we say OK I think the next one is actually saying uh, use option schedule to set work entered in hours not the default days. So you can go to schedule right above view and you can say work is entered in hours, that's good. You also say duration is entered in hours, just to make sure everything's in hours. I think that's what he wants. And say OK. Um, see what else he wants. Use the project information to select the 24 hour calendar. Um, so tasks can be placed in weekends, unless you'll never work a weekend. Um, Otherwise, they'll scoot over the grayed out weekends to Mondays. Okay, so if you work weekends, you want to change it to a 24 hour calendar, um, which I think is simply by going to project, project information, and calendar, say 24 hours, and say OK. And then, let's see what else we have here. It's uh, um, task information. Uh, recurring tasks to show the class times, or if you've got regular times, you can plan to set aside for project work, such as every Tuesday, Thursday, uh, 6 to 8.40, something like that. You could have that be a recurring task. Or if you work every Sunday night on this, uh, Sunday night, you could say you work every Sunday night on it at 9 to 10. You could do that as well. Um, to do a recurring task, you would just go to insert recurring task task name could be um, you know anything or you could say class time let's say weekly say Tuesday Thursday and say uh, yeah you know, when it started so it would have started I think 6 um, 14 I think I do believe um, and then end by I think it's 8 4 I guess maybe Um, 
I guess you could just go ahead and say uh, these times could be um, 6 p.m. And this could be maybe 8.40. Or you could even have it be like 8.2, so that not the last day of class could be the, date, the class before that, since I don't think you'll be doing much on the last day of class, because you can't really work on it the last day of class. Um, and that duration would be uh, about three hours, I guess, I think. Um, or we'd even do uh, 2.6, maybe 6.6, six, 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 or maybe just two sixes. Um, you can say OK, I guess. Um, you move task 12 of project number one. This is before the start date. Um, oh, I didn't change the, didn't change something right. Um, this is something. When you get, uh, whoa. When you get all these, just move it over. When you get the uh, pound signs. Um, let's see here. So you have whoops well we didn't do it right did we nope so let's see here uh, task information go ahead and do ta recurring task information um, no I think we did it right that looks that looks pretty good um, it ends on 8.4 yep 2.66 hours, which is, uh, I think that's 2 hours and 40 minutes or so. Or you can just round it to 3 if you want. Um, but that's good. Looks good. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that, though, because I don't need it. If you want to delete something, you just d say delete the entire task and say uh, delete it all. Okay. And then uh, let's see what we else what else we have here. Um, make a good looking work breakdown structure by coming up with a description for each phase of the project, like deli deliverable number one, deliverable number two, so that the the, uh, the tasks are stru structured to resemble the project number one that you're doing. Um, use the indent button to indent the tasks and for the deliverables so there is a rolled up bar for each phase so you'd have this one say maybe I don't think you want it to say exactly deliverable to deliverable number one but um, like this one whatever deliverable number one was you could maybe give it like a short description of it instead of just deliverable number one um, or you just leave it that. I'm not really sure. Let's see. Then that took. Uh, let's see. There was. You know, making uh, for a main panel or uh, authenticate user. Um, make. So this would be one thing, and you could say uh, indent right arrow. Um, so now, deliverable number one took or uh, consisted of making FRM auth authenticate user. Um, you'd say durations, set this duration to maybe it took you an hour to make the form for that. And then what else did it? What else did uh, deliverable div one you know consist of? Write all these down. Then once you're done, you can say. You know, div two, and then write down everything that div two consisted of, and div three and div four. And if you don't really remember what div one, div two, and three and four were, you can just go to YouTube, and then you can go to my channel, Crazy Ninja Mike, and you can look at all these and see. You know, look back through it and see what it consisted of, uh, you know, what panels and forms and things. 
Um, same for div two, and I guess div three you could do the same as well. But you're doing it right now, so it's should understand what div three is um, consisting of. Okay, and then you can set the durations, the uh, start end times to be right, the time itself to be right, not just the uh, hours. Um, what you can do, uh, right click, go to task information, and you set the actual hours that it took uh, place wh when you worked on it and things. Um, let's see here. You can control click or drag through several tasks and click the little chain symbol to give them predecessor relationship relationships so they'll uh, float in a time sequence. Um, yeah, you just, so div 2, you want to do div 1 before you do div 2, right? So you could do what he said there or you could just type in 1. Uh, Oh, whoops, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you want to first, I just kind of messed up that. Let's see. Now let's type 1. So now 1, or div 2 requires that you do first div 1, which makes sense. You know, you'd first want to turn in div 1 and get that complete before you start div 2. Um, or you do it the way he did it with the control uh, click. Um, let's see what else we have here. It's ordinary to break the predecessor relationships when recording students' actual work. These are mostly so that the task will float uh, during planning stages. When moving a task that has a, a predecessor defined, you'll get a prompt asking if it's okay, and it's always okay to um, move move that. Um, Let's <coughs> see, so you can. Use a task with zero duration to place a milestone at the due date and actual delivered date of each deliverable. So I guess right here you'd say uh, yeah, due date. And you would want to make it 6 o'clock on whatever due date deliverable one was due. Um, that's what he wants there and he would want you to put zero as that. Um, but you'd want it to be uh, requiring you to have everything else complete for div 1 before you can actually turn it in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you want to sign yourself as the resource for each task. Otherwise work will show a zero and task will occur to work, accrue to work uh, when assigned to a resource. Um, do not assign a resource to the rolled up or uh, out dented taskbar. Assign the resource to the individual tasks only. Assigning a resource to both will cause doubling the effort. Um, okay, so we could just go ahead and make, go to resources, specify, specify the people and equipment and things. Type like Michael Becker, your name. And then standard rate, supposed to be 65. And then you go back to tasks. And you can set the resource name for making the form authenticate user as Michael Becker did that. Due date, Michael Becker did that. And for everything else, you would just choose. But you don't want to do it for div 1 right there. Um, not the main thing, just the subtasks. Otherwise, it'll be doubling. Um, let's see, and. I'll continue with the next video.